Okay then my friends, so in the last video we created this upvote cloud function right here. It's a callable function and we want to now call that from the front end when a user clicks on one of these arrows right here. So to do this, we're going to create a function which is registered inside this view instance right here because remember this view instance now controls this section of the UI. If we go to our index file over here we can see that this has an ID of app and the view instance over here controls that element so everything inside it is controlled by the view instance. So we're going to create a method inside this view instance which can then be used from this bit of template. So you'll see how that works in a second. The first thing we need to do is create a methods property which is an object on the view instance and inside this we can register and create different methods or functions that we want to be able to use with inside this bit of template. So let's create one and let's call it upvote request because that's what we're upvoting and we're going to take in an ID because we need to know which tutorial request we want to update and we need to know the ID of that tutorial request so that in the cloud function we can query the database for that record. So all I'm going to do for now is log the ID to the console over here so we can see that in a second. Now we need to invoke this function when we click on one of these arrows on each of these individual list items. So remember inside the template we cycle through all of the requests and we output an li tag for each individual request and we have an arrow for each individual request. So we can attach a click event to this thing using view by using a view directive. So I can say v and then on and it's going to be on click and we set that equal to something. So we're saying here, okay, well, when someone clicks this arrow, I want you to do something. And from here, I can call this function, which is upvote request, not upvoted, upvote request. And to do that, I just need to say upvote request, like so. And we want to pass in the ID of the request. Well, we get access to the individual request. So we can say request dot ID because remember we have the ID property attached to the request because we added it right here. So now we're logging the ID to the console. So let me see if this all works. I'm going to open up the console and make this a bit bigger and refresh over here. And now if I click on one of these, we see the individual ID of that request document. So now we have that. And that's the thing we need to send to the cloud function because inside the cloud function, we use the ID on the data right here and right here. So we need to send that to the cloud function. But first of all, we need to actually call the cloud function. So let's do that. We get a reference to it. First of all, I'm going to call it upvote and set it equal to Firebase dot functions invoke that and then we want an HTTPS callable and this is called I think just upvote but let's have a look yep upvote so let's copy that and paste it right here and now we have a reference to that cloud function now we want to invoke it but we also want to pass through some data and on that data we want an ID property which is this thing right here now a bit of shorthand because this and this are the same name we can just say id and javascript does the rest for us okay so now we've done that we can catch any errors that happen afterwards so i'm going to say dot catch and then inside the catch block we receive any error now remember inside this cloud function there was a couple of cases that we had an error the first one was if the user was not authenticated and the second one was if the user has already upvoted that particular request. So we can receive that error back right here and we can do something with the error message. For now, I'll tell you what, we'll just log the error to the console. So console.log error.message like so. Okay, so I think this is pretty much done now when we click on the arrow it's invoking this function we're getting a reference to the cloud function invoking that passing the id through as well and catching the error if there's a problem so i'm going to save this now and the first time i do this 
then it might take a little while because it's the first time we're invoking the function, but thereafter it should start to speed up a little bit. And I'm gonna upvote this bottom one, Node.js. So click upvote. Oh, first of all, we need to refresh so we can catch the uh, the changes on the front end. Okay, now let's try it. So Node.js, upvote that. It's gonna take a few seconds, but we should get a response in a minute. And we do, it's gone to one. Cool. Now, if I try to upvote that again, then we get an error and it says you can only upvote something once. Cool. So what if I try to upvote this one here? So that should go to two because I've not previously upvoted that one. It was one because we changed it directly in the database before. But that's the first time I've upvoted this one. If I try again though, then we get an error. So I can now only upvote things once, which is nice. That's what I wanted. Now there's one more thing I want to do and that is to order these in order of votes. So the ones with the most votes or upvotes goes to the top. Now to do that we have to come down here where we get a reference to the requests collection and we use an extra method on this called order by and then we're going to order by the upvotes property. That's the property which stores the number of upvotes and we're going to order them in descending order. That means the highest at the top. So D E S C for descending. So now if I save this and refresh, we should see that they're ordered so that the two is at the top, then the one, then the zero. Awesome. Now, if I add a new request, let's just say this is Python and submit the request. We should see that new tutorial request on the page, first of all, in a second. And we do. But if I now upvote this one, Laravel 6, then it should go to 1. And now Laravel 6 moves above Python because obviously the data in the database has changed. We get a snapshot, a new snapshot of the database and they're ordered by upvotes. So now everything with the highest vote is going to be above anything with a lower vote. So there we go, that's the voting system pretty much sorted. Now, I'll tell you what I want to do first of all is sign out and I'm going to register with another person, mario at thenetninja.co.uk and test123. And the reason I'm doing this is to make sure that I can still vote with a different user on these things which I've already voted. So can I do that? Yep. Yeah. I can do this one. I can do this one. Can I? It's not gone up yet. Yep, it's worked. Uh, but if I try these again, then I still get an error. Awesome. So this all works now. Now, in the next video, what I'd like to do is something with this error. I'm going to show some kind of little notification at the top, a bit like a toast, so that if I try to do this numerous times, it doesn't just paste an error here. It actually shows me on the web page that I can't do that. So we'll do that in the next video.